Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. Finally, two years later, I get to talk to Charlie Price. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I have uh, some things I want to catch up because I know you got a lot going on. You've made some changes in your life, so I want to talk about those. And also just salon life in general because I know you have a lot to share. So um, let's get started. Charlie Price, I don't really even think we need to talk too much about your past. I think everybody knows where they know you from, but if you want to get into that a bit, my prison past yes. or my or my hairdressing past? <laughs> yeah, your prison past. Um, but yeah, so you started, uh, well, I first saw you on Sheer Genius, obviously, and I think a lot of people did. Uh -huh. And then, so let's talk about right after that. What happened? Well, right after that, I got a lot of exposure, obviously, and I had been a platform artist for about 10 years before that, or maybe even 15, and... Uh, it was a really great thing because everybody wanted to know more about me. But right. then some of the people who already knew me thought that it kind of perpetuated that I was a lightweight. So I had to win hairstylist of the year to prove that I'm not, right. you know, right. a completely a big piece of reality show fluff. No, I, and I think you're the furthest thing from that. And anybody that Thank follows you. you on social knows that because you post a lot of um, great images Great Thank content you. constantly. So let's get into that. You do a lot of photo shoots, I right? do. A lot of photo uh, I'm a bit of a photo shoot addict. Yeah. But I think right now we have to have material because the best way to reach hairdressers and engage in the industry is social media, and you need yeah. constant content. Yeah. Just like a cable news network. Yeah. You know? The, the, I think what a lot of people don't realize and a lot of big companies don't realize right now is that you, like, they're putting out things every once, every once in a while, but, like, you're, you're forgettable. That's right. So, it's, a, it's a bit like the fashion industry. Everybody's trying to catch up with H&M because the minute a runway show happens, they've got their team of people there to duplicate that look and get it out there to the masses right away. That's what we're dealing with in the salon industry. Right. Or like Napster. Yeah, exactly. So let's speaking of fashion, let's talk about Fashion Week. You do that quite often, right? Yeah, we do Fashion Week. And I know there's a lot of companies that do uh, New York Fashion Week and others, um, the European shows. But what we do is we bring everybody together together. Um, before and we practice the look on mannequins and everybody meets the team knows each other networks with people from around the country around the world whatever whoever comes in and we actually let people finish the look so it's meant to look like it was all done with my hands but it really is right. i let everybody finish the work unless it, i have to change it yeah so people really understand the process and they know exactly what they can take away from it and and how to kind of go forward from it because I did runway shows for like uh, 15 years, and, and it's it's a very confusing, um, nebulous world. It's so the I worst. I, I did yeah. I did Fashion Week twice, and it's the most confusing. Like exactly. their shows are kind of confusing backstage, but but Fashion Week is like you don't really know what you're doing. So that's really cool that you guys get together and you plan it all out. We want people to fall in love with us and fall in love with fashion shows and fall in love with the idea of coming to New York City every two months or every twice a year. Yeah. And so if they're upset, confused, insecure and have anxiety, none of that happens. They just shut down. Right. And it, and it leaves people with a very bad, discouraged effect. And we want them to have to be happy and, and, and to understand why it's important and why it's useful for marketing for them. Right, and you keep saying us, so let's talk about who is us. Us is the Beauty Underground. It's an artist collective that I put together, people from masters from different um, manufacturers, and we come together to do Fashion Week, bespoke education, hair shows, and photo collection. Um, and it's kind of an offspring of my um, magazine, Beauty uh, Underground, which is really just a forum for people to show their work without ads without censorship and just total freedom to express themselves so we have like ruth roach the artistic director of purology jill lights from redkin lisa van from um aveda and, and many many others katie nielsen from scruples and then um, my fashion week team nikisa and sharina that i've worked with for years and then we just have our ebony team here okay shirley gordon from wella misha bell for care therapy um it's just a whole it's a gang of hairdressers that's awesome and so tell me how that started what where was your purpose behind well, the Well, we, we have the Ebony team, which is the newest incarnation. We started with a women's team because I, I was talking to all my really good girlfriends and I was like, you know, it's so weird that there's like a glass ceiling for gays and, and the women in the industry get kind of lost. They're not given maybe the quite the degree of revenance or, yeah. that I think they should have. Um, so I'm like, let's start our own team. You know, we can all use our own products. You know, Ruth loves Pureology. Jill is like lives and breathes Redkin. Right. Lisa is totally in the cult of Ada. She's the, it is a cult. <laughs> Dangerous. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so 
we're having so much fun and we're also able to kind of just reach hairdressers without trying to sell them anything. Right. It takes away that agenda and we can just have jam sessions together, but also really teach hairdressers how they're responsible for their own careers. You yeah. know, everybody relies on their salon owner or the person they're assisting or their manufacturer to do it all for them. Really, we're not anti-manufacturer at all. Right. Yeah. We are trying to just empower hairdressers to realize they're responsible for their own thing. So in the essence of it, we're really pro manufacturer because we're helping them out. Right. Coaching their people to be like, it's not their, it's not their responsibility to make it happen for you. You have yeah. to make it happen for yourself. Yeah. I think a lot of people get confused that it's like a damn the man situation. No. It's really, it's not, a, it's, that's not what it is. It's about not relying on a product company to support your career. No, your career you know, is yours. We, we love all these products. Yeah. I, I worked with Aveda years ago. I still love their products. And I, and I have all my friends from there. I, I worked with Redken. They host us for Fashion Week. Arojo just hosts us for Fashion Week. I'm not anti-manufacturer. Right. I'm anti-dogma, and I'm anti-complacency, and I'm anti-apathy. Right. And what I think happens, and it's, and it's a problem for manufacturers, is you get a tribe of people, and they just feel like they can just kind of coast. Yeah. And so you get, uh, you get sort of this, like, river of mediocrity, and we're trying to kind of pierce through that. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and, and Gordon from American Salon is yes, the one that hooked this up. Yes, he's the one up. that, he, you know, he came in and did an intervention with me, and I put me through social media um, um, rehab. I thought that's what you are talking about when you were talking about changes in my life. No, that's what, that is kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm a new woman. You're a new woman? Yeah, well, I'm half woman. Okay, I don't know. It's that. all the rage, you know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, you caught me off guard, but... Uh, <laughs> I do that. Yeah, that's good. So, we, um, but changes... For me personally, watching you, I don't study you, um, but I see your work, and I've seen you go through a lot of changes. You look very healthy. Thank you. Um, which is something I'm working on at this point in my life. So tell me, tell me about like just getting a whole refresh, restart on uh, on that aspect. Yeah. Well, um, I when sheer genius happened, I created this very um, profane, crazy party animal person. And um, it, it was me, but it was an amplified version of me. And so now I'm getting close to 50. Um, I want to feel good. Yeah, I'm 47. Wow. I want to feel good. Um, I want to look good. Uh, and I love, you know, drinking and having fun. I don't do drugs, but I just would rather feel better. Right. So have a little bit of Corona instead of four gallons of wine. Plus, I, I, I just feel like I have such a message that I want to give. And if my, my message is obscured by stuff that really doesn't matter or that's um, attention getting and provocative in the wrong way, it's yeah. just not working. So I don't I don't cuss on Facebook anymore. I cuss in person, but not in Facebook. You do have some good rants on Facebook though. But they but and you they're notice to they're the point. softer though. Yeah, they are softer and they're to the point. Because I feel like sometimes my delivery was so abrasive that people just shut off and they weren't even hearing what I was actually trying to say. Right. So I've kind of tried to clarify my message and, and get a little more concise and it's like a new album. You know, I always wear black. Now I'm wearing color. Yeah. Uh, there's, I'm not wearing the giant glasses anymore. You know, it's just time for a change. Good for you. Yeah. No, I think that that's great. And so tell me, um, I guess to kind of sum this all up, you have uh, the Southwest Hairdressing Yeah, we're Award, doing right? the Southwest Hairstyling Awards because I'm on the Naha Committee. And I just always thought we need to get more people, grassroots, to know about the industry, know about the traditions of hairdressing, and know about awards and okay. why they're important for marketing and for longevity and to develop your eye and all that stuff. And I really believe in that. So we decided to start regional ones. We did the Southwest with my, a 303 magazine in Denver, and we did one uh, every year, Northwest Hair Styling Awards with Lisa Van in Seattle. Um, and then it's branched out off of a hair show that we just started 10 years ago. Um, so we have Ted Gibson coming to get um, Celebrity of the Year, or Celebrity Hairstyles of the Year Award. Tap of the Coffee is getting Lifetime Achievement. DJ Muldoon is getting um, Independent Platform Artist of the Year. And then we have one open category. Very and cool. Tabitha and Ted will give that out. Also, I'm, I'm working a lot with Eden Sassoon, and she's kind of linked into that because Sean Dawson, her creative director of Eden by Eden Sassoon Salon, is a judge as well. Okay. And she's such a proponent of this, the traditions of hair and why it's important to remember who her dad was, Trevor Sorby. If, if obviously, he's not dead, but people don't even know who Trevor Sorby is. Right. It's so weird to me. You know? Yeah. You know what's funny? I am uh, in that generation of, I don't think I know who that is either. Yeah. So it you is know, we got we to gotta have people like myself at my age make sure that it doesn't get forgotten. Exactly. And that's, that is what it's all about. And that's why I enjoy, it was kind of why I do this interview thing, because this allows me to meet people and to dig deeper into what, because 
now people are being brought up in the industry not learning any of that. Like, And you can see the frustration yeah. and they're lost and they're yeah. confused and there's such a rich history and there's so much information and knowledge and talent out there. Yeah. I mean, we don't want it to get lost and we don't want them to all become flight attendants. Right. You know? exactly, we want to exactly. keep them in the industry. That's so true. All right, cool. So tell me, uh, last thing would be, what are you excited about for the future? What What do you have? Is I something? just am excited about the revolution. And I think, you know, I always thought the revolution was going to be um, new manufacturers and new artists, like, you know, kind of the second coming of like the Anthony Muscullos and the horse and the um, Nicholas French, Vivian McKinder type people, Ruth Roach, whatever. And they're obviously still around. There's tons of artists around, tons of great products that are coming out all the time. But I think the revolution is social media. Everybody yeah. has a voice to go directly to speak to whoever they want. Yep. And so it's, it could be a gift or a curse depending on what you do with it. Right. And I, I was kind of freaked out by it, uh, by all the mermaid crunch curls and the crazy apps and the bad photography and the horrible models and the tackiness. Right. But it's like, well, then I can it just makes a more point of difference for those people that actually yeah. do know what they Yeah, doing. it makes you you stand out in your way and it's and it's real. You know, and like it also gives me something to teach. Right. Let's yeah. let's let's consider something else, you know, cuz yeah. everybody's doing the same thing. Yeah. And if everybody's doing the same thing, nobody gets noticed. It's exactly. like lemmings going yeah. off the cliff together. Yeah. We so don't true. Wanna, don't awesome. be a lemming. Well, <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much yeah. for sitting down. I know it's uh, I I've, I've been hoping for this interview for a while. Thank you to American Salon Magazine. Uh, my favorite magazine in the industry. It's the reason that we're here um, and that I get to talk to people like Charlie Price. So Thank you. Thank you so see much. You later. Yeah, Cheers. thank you guys. We'll see you on the next video.